Now comes the fun stuff. We're gonna put in some walls and we're gonna put in some lights. If you pay five bucks a month to Roll20, you get access to dynamic lighting. Now the difference in dynamic lighting and static lighting, which everybody has, is dynamic lighting varies depending on your input, where you're standing, and your experience. Basically, you get to see things the way your token would see them. And you don't have this issue that you have on actual tabletops, where you can see that the DM has set up 30 other rooms on this table, and you're just supposed to pretend you can't see them. With dynamic lighting, you can't see them. And it's wonderful. So how do you use it? How do you set it up? To turn on the lights, head to the page settings and turn on dynamic lighting. And now comes the options. Explorer mode was previously known as Fog of War. The idea that exploration reveals chunks of the map and that your character will vaguely remember those areas once they move somewhere else. There, the map becomes grayscale and you only view it as you remember it. If something changes, say, if one Mr. Guard was knocked unconscious, well, the player wouldn't know if he'd been discovered unless they went back to check. Whether you should use this depends heavily on you and your table's preferences. Uh, players will be far less frustrated or disoriented when navigating dungeons if you use Explorer mode. I have no memory of this place. But if confusing and uh, hellish is the vibe that you're going for on this dungeon, maybe you should keep it turned off. You could even choose to toggle this setting depending on feats or racial abilities in the party that maybe would help someone navigate better. Then decide if you want your map to be constantly lit. If you have an outdoor setting, such as a sunny day or a full moon, check daylight mode, aka global illumination. If your setting requires a torch or some other extinguishable light source to navigate, keep daylight mode turned off. And finally, there's update on drop. By default, this is off, which means if a player picks up their token and hovers it around, they'll be able to see real-time lighting updates. This is problematic, because if I'm the DM, and one of my players picks up their token, drags it through the dungeon, and then brings it right back to where they were standing before they let go, I wouldn't have any way of knowing. Other players only see the token teleport when they go from A to B, meaning if it goes right back to where it starts, nobody knows they moved at all. By checking off update on drop, their vision only updates when they drop the token. So if someone's snooping ahead, everyone's gonna see it in real time. And if that's not persuasive enough, it's also way less strenuous on the rickety stilts holding Roll20 together. Walls and lights are actually gonna go in the same layer. It's the dynamic lighting layer. You're gonna notice that your drawing tool becomes a line tool. First, we're gonna do walls to so start with an obnoxious color. I'm talking like Nickelodeon green or orange or something that can be viewed by my visually impaired people. That was so inclusive. Now, before you start clicking, stop it, get your hand off the mouse. You were about to do that the full way. I know what you were gonna do. You were gonna hit left click. You were gonna drag around and try and copy the walls. Well, let me show you the cool way. Hold shift, hit left click. Keep holding shift. Hit left click again. Notice how this is snapping to the grid. When you finish doing a chunk of wall, hit right click. There you go. Do not wall over where doors should be. Just end your lines when you get to a door threshold and then start somewhere else. If you run into a point where the walls aren't lined up perfectly with the grid, you can let go of shift, keep hitting left click, and you're gonna get slightly uneven lines. They're gonna be a little wibbly wobbly. Maybe you're making a cave, maybe that's wonderful. When you're done doing your line shapes, once you get to your doors, pick another very obnoxious color, make the line a little bit thicker, and then do the same shift click trick just to cover the gap. Now let go of shift and just a little bit off and diagonal, make a little bit of a handle that veers off. It's just gonna make it a little bit easier to finally grab the door and move it whenever you're opening it for players. When laying your walls down in a cavernous area like this, remember that a lot of the cave feel comes from those jagged edges there. And if you were just walling off the walkable space, you'd miss out on a lot of that cave vibe. So by letting go of shift, you color just outside the lines and capture a little more of the jagged walls. Careful not to take it too far though, because if you open up an entire square's worth of space, players are gonna be able to walk into it. There you go, look at you. You've just put down more walls and doors in the last 10 minutes than, than probably UNICEF has, or some mission trip in South Africa. And you should feel good about that. You showed those chumps. Now we're just gonna rehearse real quick. We're gonna pretend that a player has just uh, walked up to one of these great doors and you're about to show them who's boss because, because they can't open it themselves. That's all you. 
You're going to go to the lighting layer. You're going to use the select tool. Once you've got it selected, just use the arrow keys to move the door parallel, meaning you're going to slide it into the wall. This is why you're going to want that handle there for later. Whenever you want to close that door again, try and grab that little handle out from the wall and then drag it back in place. How about lights? Well, there's a couple different ways you can do that. One that is especially dynamic is to make lights that can be picked up and moved around with great ease. The way you're going to do that is go to the objects layer, where you're going to put down a torch object, whatever that may look like. It could be a glowing crystal or maybe in, instead of a torch, the torch. But whatever it is, stick that where it's going to go on the map. Then you're going to double click that object and your third tab is going to be dynamic lighting. So we don't need to worry about it having token vision. We don't need it to have night vision. We're looking at the emits light factor. In D&D, torches give off 40 feet of light. 20 of that is bright and the other 20 is dim. You can also set the light's color. You could even make it a directional light uh, by rotating the token around. You could do something like an accurate bullseye lantern, which sheds a very narrow but long stream of light. If you have multiple objects like this, and you probably do, go ahead and now copy them and paste them all around. Use the alt tool to click and drag and get them right in line where they go on the wall. And you have populated several dozen torches without having to input all those settings all over again. The benefit of doing this on the objects layer is that you can be a little more creative with the light sources. You can let players feel a little more immersed even. A rogue can pick up the torch off of the wall and they can throw it down a long hallway and you can take that and drag it down the hall and they can see in real time as though that torch was sailing down the hall a brief glimmer of whatever monster the torch passes over before it disappears into darkness again. If that's not the kind of gameplay you're looking for though, you might find the board a little less cluttered by moving these down to the dynamic lighting layer, where you're not going to see an object that it emanates from, you're just going to see the light. Okay, hey, it's me, from the future, editing this video, and in the time that it took me to shoot the footage a month ago and get to editing this part now, a month later, um, they added this new button here, and I got mixed feelings about it. It's right under the ruler tool for a DM. I mean, here's the thing. It drops like a, you know, 20 bright, 20 dim light source with this image automatically ascribed to it. So if you're looking for something that can be used on the objects layer, I think this looks kind of ridiculous and, and clashes with almost any art style you're using, unless it's like black and white pen and paper. I also think the, um, standard settings may not be exactly what you're looking for all the time. Maybe you want, you know, 30 bright, 60 dim, in which case you're better off just making the original light source anyway and copy pasting it. Uh, but, but if you don't want your light sources to necessarily have objects ascribed to them on the map, like you don't need it to come from what is clearly a torch, you can just go to the dynamic lighting layer. You can click on the torch button and you can just stamp them down. Just, it, it's really easy. I remember playing with this initially like a few days ago and thinking of some reason that I hated it and I cannot remember why, but that's my two cents. Now obviously this bird's eye view here as the GM is a little more telling than it's going to be on your player's screen. To give yourself their perspective, it's as easy as just clicking on their token and hitting control L, which was, <laughs> which was Jor-El's bastard son. <laughs> Fucking stupid. You can return to your out of body experience by just clicking anywhere else. Um, if you're using Fog of War though, remember that your little joy rides from their perspective reveal the map as though they were walking through it. If you do have to reset it, head up to the top left, select revealable darkness here, and then hit that reset dumpster. 